Father Robert Lauder has an international reputation as a literary and film critic. He's also a professor of philosophy at St. John's University and the host of Net TV's The Catholic Novel, and he joins us now. Father Lauder, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Liz. I love all my interviews, but I have really been looking forward to this. Thank we you. just saw Tim's package, the beautiful bookstore, the line of books. How did you first get into Catholic novels? Well, as a senior at Xavier High School in Manhattan, and the Jesuit teaching English had us all read Graham Greene's Brighton Rock. Mm -hmm. It was a Catholic crime thriller, and I didn't know anything like that even existed. Wow. So that hooked me, and mm -hmm. I've, sta I've stayed hooked for many years. And, and having said that, what makes it a Catholic novel? You said you didn't even know that those existed. Right. Uh, my definition is this. A Catholic novel is one whose theme is based on some Catholic uh, dogma, moral teaching, sacramental principle, liturgical principle, and the mystery of Catholicism mm -hmm. is treated favorably. So like James Joyce's portrait of the artist as a young man is filled with Catholic symbols, but the church is not, the mystery of the church is not treated well. I love the way your face lights up as you talk about these books. Have you noticed a rise or a, a decline in the demand for these wonderful books? The bad news is a serious decline. Really? Yes. I've tried to get uh, Catholic high schools and Catholic colleges to, in, uh, to put into their curriculum a, a course on the Catholic novel. Mm -hmm. And I've had I've really interested no one to, to do that. I think they f they think it's too parochial, and of course it's the exact opposite. The Catholic novels deal with the most important issues, so uh, so, so I have kind of a one man apostolate, <laughs> try, you know, trying to get. <laughs> well, hopefully after this uh, interview, you'll be able to <laughs> rally more troops behind you because it's so worth it. Let's talk about some of the Catholic books that are considered classic classics. That is, we have the uh, the Confessions of Saint Augustine by the saint of the same name. We have the Imitation of Christ by Thomas Kempis, Summa Theologica by Saint Thomas. What is it about these books that have stood the test of time? Well, to put it very simply, I think they're insights into the mystery of God mm. and they're insights into the mystery of human person. That's it basically. And you can return to those books over and over again. As a matter of fact, a course I've been teaching for 20 years, this coming semester in the spring, I'm going to put St. Augustine in there. Oh, well, we have to now talk about your top five Catholic books then. That's a great segue. What should the faithful at home be reading? Okay, the, the, the Catholic novels I think they should be reading would be Brideshead Revisited, which is a, a classic. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's the best uh, drama that has ever been put on television. I met Jeremy Irons once. and uh, I love him. I said, thank yeah. you for Brideshead mm -hmm. Revisited. And he said, did we get the religion right? And I said, you did. He said, we worked very, very hard on, on doing it right. I appreciate that. Yeah. The, the, screen, the screenwriter was an agnostic, mm -hmm. the, the guy that wrote the screenplay, but he got it right. He got so it So that's right. one. Another? Uh, my favorite Catholic novel is The End of the Affair by Graham Greene. The main character in this novel is God. He's, he's on almost every page. So this is my favorite. Okay. Uh, then another one by Graham Greene, which I think is the best novel on the priesthood, The Power and the Glory. Mm -hmm. uh, it was made a, into a, a good film with uh, John Ford directed it, Henry Fonda starred in it, but it had almost nothing to do with the novel. Uh, because the novel is about a priest who has fathered an illegitimate child and is a quote unquote whiskey priest. But Greene is such a genius. From that, he draws out the mystery of the priesthood. Okay. Uh, number four, I would say, is Marietta in Ecstasy. I'm going to encourage you to read this one. Okay. It's about a 17-year-old girl in a very strict convent, and she begins having the stigmata. And the question is, is it authentic? Is she a fake? Mm. Or is she crazy? And I'm going to tell you, on page 10, you'll say it's a fake. On page 20, you'll say it's, it's authentic. So it keeps you it's engaged the throughout the whole thing. sentence of the book. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. To the last sentence. And I gave it to a, a sister. She said it was wonderful, and then she, I said, what did it mean? And she gave it the wrong interpretation, and she said, none. Oh, wow. Uh, and then she reread it, and she, thought, she said I was right. And then the last one is Deep River okay. by Shisako Endo, and he's the one who did silence. And this is, uh, I think Deep River refers to God. And we're talking about the timeliness and the compelling nature of all these books That's that right. just remain just so substantive and relevant. Right. Uh, Liz, nobody I've ever recommended any of these books okay. to has come back to me and said, I didn't like it. All right. So, so it's really a treasure hidden in a field. It's a shame. Oh, I love the way you put that. Thank you so much, Father Lauder. I could talk to you forever. You'll have to come back and talk to us. Okay, more. just, Thank just, you for being with just us. invite me. I absolutely will. <laughs> You're invited. It's on record. <laughs>